And it looks like our setup is complete, so I'm gonna throw it over to the Axeman for his any percent run of Ultima 4. Take it away, Axeman. Thank you so much for having me. This has been, it's been a blast to come back to RPG Limit Break after, after having it, uh, have, yeah, having a few years. I wanted to do this in 2020, um, and so now we get to come back here, and I get to hang out with Smelly McTroll again. <laughs> and, uh, and Taskbot, of course. And I guess this is a new Taskbot body, so if everyone knows, I am a, a friend of Taskbot that has introduced Taskbot to some RPGs, and I'll be actually be playing as a human today, but I'm also the Task author uh, for this game. If you go on taskvideos.org, you can see the task. Um, so this is an any percent run. There's no luck manipulation. So we're, we're going to have some interesting stuff happening here. And uh, but I'm going to be hoping Taskbot gives me good luck here. But you know, there's no guarantees. Um, we've also got the cloth map. This is the cloth map from Ultima 7, but like it's Britannia, so we can we can actually refer to it if we if we get lost, I guess. <laughs> Um, I don't know how your rune, your knowledge of the runes is, but that's how it is. Um, so I guess it, it's the cutoff. We have to pick the name for our character. And um, so I'm going to uh, get an empty slot here. And um, so what is the name of our character going to be? With $100 raised, the name is going to be Selin, S-E-L-I-N. Oh, thank you so much. S-E-L-I-N, like that? That's correct. Okay, so as soon as I get started here, it'll be um, it'll be uh, start time, or uh, so if we're already, I'm gonna get going. So three, two, one, go. So we start out. We have to pick our class, and Ultima is this uh, very old RPG series. Um, there's like a frame story where you're uh, you're a guy from the normal world, but something happens and you see a fortune teller and in this one it looks like you're a fortune uh they're doing sort of this abacus thing and really it's just a um it's a, a single elimination uh choice here we're gonna pick honor and each one that honor comes up and that's gonna make us the paladin and the paladin is the best starting class yeah absolutely so yeah. paladin starts with higher XP and also is very versatile. So there's all types of equipment, um, like we're gonna see here. Yeah. Um, you can get a bow immediately. I mean, not only do we start with the best equipment, we have the best options to eventually equip really good equipment. Um, we get magic, and it, if we increase our stats, our magic can eventually be quite good. Um, we're gonna start by selling our armor, and we're gonna buy a bow a ranged weapon and the ranged weapons are pretty good well, well, as we're gonna see we got tactical battles and that it makes things interesting but what we really want is a ranged fight so we won't have to like spend a lot of time moving up close to the enemies I'm gonna equip my weapon here just so that we get uh, get a little extra encounters so in this game unlike a lot of RPGs uh, Enemies come to you even if you just stand still. So if we if we just stand still, the enemies will come to us. Also, yeah. we walked onto a swamp and got poisoned. Oh, there's a the misses already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in this game with ranged attacks, you will miss. Yep. Like it, it's just going to happen. So in fact, even the task can't avoid missing. The reason is because. Um, every time you hit with a ranged attack or use one, it, it it adds up this counter, and when the counter rolls over from like 255 to zero, it you get a miss. And so as long as you just keep attacking, like there's nothing you can do to stop that miss from happening. But if we only get one one enemy, it's not a big deal. Those trolls are like, they're they're one of the the most annoying enemies we can get right now, actually. Yeah, I'd say trolls and and wizards. Yeah. No, no relation to the trolls. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can get a few wizards at this point that can cast reflect and they can just carry your your ranged attacks all day. Uh, so the, for this first leg of the journey, uh, what we want to be doing here is getting 400 XP and also getting 
about 1,300 gold by the time we get to uh, a couple towns from here. A yeah. town called Minoc. I'm actually only going to be, well, I'm actually only going to be aiming for uh, 11, uh, even 1050. 1050 is good enough for me. Um, you know, if you're trying to get a good time, you probably want to aim for more because uh, there's, if you have more gold, there's some extra options you can do. But uh, just to kind of uh, get a, a, a more safe run here, it's it's a little easier if we aim lower. <laughs> uh, for the So every time you open a chest, the, uh, the gold amount, the way it's calculated is it takes a random number from 0 to 255, and then it, uh, it kind of subtracts 100 until it gets under 100. And so you're going to have over... Uh, <laughs> You're going to have better odds to have a lower number. So I'm going to wait a full moon cycle here just to make sure we've got enough uh, enough fight enough fights. And this is like the worst, uh, yeah, one of the worst fights we can get. We've got three Absolutely. trolls. Yeah. They're going to keep, so they have a missile attack. They use it randomly. They might just keep walking in if we're lucky. They take two shots, um, but at, at low levels, they still show up and sometimes in three. Now, if you have more people in your party, you get more enemies. So we're going to actually avoid getting extra people in our party just so that we can get lower numbers of enemies in these random encounters. So one thing we should note about the random encounters is that you actually have to take 49 of them. You're actually yes. required to complete 49 encounters in this game to finish it. Yeah, so at minimum. We need to prove ourselves in these eight virtues. And one of the virtues is valor. And to prove our valor, yeah, we've, we've got to we've got to fight these random fights. We are not allowed to run away. So if we just if you move around in battle, you can uh, move. Uh, you can either move up to the enemies to hit them with your melee attack. Another thing you can do is just move off the screen, and that runs you away from battle. But we don't want to do that because that would be not valorous. Also, the reason why we're standing on the swamp and getting poisoned is because there is a higher encounter rate here. So we want to we want to get as many fights as we can because our, the, we can get trolled on the gold levels here, which we are. We, we've gotten some better ones lately, but we need to make up for some of those early, like, one or twos. We've at least gotten some fairly good encounters. That's true, yeah. Not going to turn down one turn arena. You know? Yep. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how many enemies you get. This, the gold is the gold treasure chest at the end of the fight is exactly the same. You have the same odds to get 99 gold or one gold. So we we want to see lower ones. There, there's a certain amount of experience we need to get, but that's going to be easy. It's it's only um, the amount of experience we need is real easy to get from uh, the fights we're going to do. But we need to get up to uh, 1,050 gold is with the route I'm doing. Um, like I said, if you get more gold, there's some time savings to be had, but this is going to be super safe. So where are so, we on the map here? So we're currently at Chelum, <laughs> which is we go right down to this bottom, uh, well, my right, your left, corner right on the side yeah. so these cloth maps are so awesome uh, they, they put them in the in the game cases I, uh, I guess Lord British when he started publishing his own games at, at origin he decided he wanted to do cool stuff like this so he he put in you know stuff in the game box that you would get and, and one of them was this cloth map that I I've, I've got here. So once this moon cycle starts to swing around, uh, he's going to go in here and get the first party member. Uh, we're going to pick up Jeff and immediately take advantage of him. <laughs> uh, and that's one of the things I really like about this speedrun is that there's sort of a character arc here. <laughs> <laughs> Canst thou laugh in the face of certain doom? You'll accompany me, but only because I'm going to take your equipment and sell it to get some extra money. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to get a few party members uh, for, just for the, the sole reason that we want to get their equipment and sell it. So we're going to come here and sell his, uh, 
his leather for uh, 200. So every time you go to sell something in a shop, they suggest that you sell it for half the price that you buy it. But you can actually, if you press them, they'll give you the full price. Okay, let's uh, check our uh, gold count right now. Okay, so we only need 50 gold. That's pretty doable. Pretty good in calendar grabbing too. Yeah. So when you have two uh, two characters, you probably get between two and five enemies. We're looking for 50 gold. Not quite there yet. It's okay. It's gonna take a couple encounters here anyway. Yeah. So I'm gonna wait before I... When I go into that town, we're gonna get our next uh, character. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, because then we'll have three characters and we'll get even more enemies in these fights. So the other drawback to having multiple car party members here, um, at least in the beginning, um, with Jeff, he doesn't have a ranged attack. Yeah. So you always have to just press auto battle, which is okay. the fastest option with him. So he'll, he'll move towards the enemy generally. Um, yeah, he doesn't have magic either. Okay, so the next character we're getting is Shamino. He is, um, he's actually, Shamino is uh, Lord British, the, the, you know, the creator. That's his alter ego in his uh, Renaissance, uh, what is his Society for Creative Acronism Life. So we've got all the money we need, so now we can actually just wait for the moons to cycle. Yeah, if you wait on a town or a dungeon entrance or anything like that, I mean, you actually won't get an encounter. Yeah, so if we just, even if we're just standing still, we still get the encounter, so we want to make sure we're actually on the town. Okay, so we got three party members. I'm gonna get one more, and so we'll have the full party. Sir MP, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna cast heal. Because uh, I want to make sure that we don't that we uh, don't actually die before we before we want to. So we're gonna get one more character, Julius, and this is his equipment isn't even worth that much, but it adds it's gonna add some safety to our like money route here. So uh, so we'll be able to for sure afford like everything we need here. So this weapon shop, we're gonna sell Julius's club, and we're actually gonna take the 50 here. We're gonna sell Shamino's sword for 400. And now we can actually buy the plus two sword. We should also note that kind of one of the overarching objectives in this game is to get your virtue. Um, all the way up to um, internally in the game uh, 100. Um, when you start out at 50, and so this first leg of the journey, you're get actually getting set back quite a bit. That's right, yeah. Every, yeah so. um, every time we sold an item for full price in the shop, uh, we that, that was considered dishonest. It didn't say anything, but it was considered dishonest, and we lost like a bunch of different virtues. So after we take a death warp, we end up at Lord British here, and uh, he'll level us up. And uh, so being in his castle is convenient. There's there's a bunch of stuff we need to do here. One of them is talk to this mage, which teaches us a very important spell. One <laughs> kill. <laughs> so yeah, we, we need a little bit more gold. Uh, there's a few spots where we can get random uh, more fights here. Uh, I'm gonna give all of our equipment to our main character, Felon here. Uh, Julius. We already sold a bunch of it, but we're gonna make sure that, uh, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> this, there he goes. This guy, <laughs> out of my way. I'm trying to be the avatar here. 
Yeah, there are a couple NPCs in Lord British's castle that will just block your path, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can walk. Okay. There we go. Thank you. There's a virtue for that, probably. Moving out of the way. Uh, but anyway, we're just going to get rid of all our people. But, you know, we stole their equipment, and now we don't have any use for them. So they'll get to hang out here in the uh, hostel. Oh, no, I can't get rid of my main guy. So this is something they added in the uh, in the NES version. They, so the original version of this game was on the PC in uh, DOS. And uh, uh, like 1985, a very old game. And uh, in that game, you were able, you're actually able to get up to all eight characters. All right, so we're gonna get a fight here. This is okay. We need, we need the money anyway. And so, you got a ship out of the deal. Yeah. I would, so I was going to walk in and out of the castle to reset the ship and, you know, hope, hope a pirate ship spawns. The pirate ship starts spawning when you reach, uh, when you reach level, um, four, which we just did. There. Do I have time to read out a couple of donations? This would be a great time, yeah. Fantastic. We have $100 from Cremora, who says, This isn't the Shepherd run, but I suppose it'll do. <laughs> but can we be honest that Shepherd is the best class? <laughs> Everyone else goes on the quest for virtue to be as good as Shepherd. Good luck on the run. So great to see my favorite Ultima being played. <laughs> Thank you. We have $15 from Kiyu, $60 from Dark77778, and. Five dollars from Ronan Raven, all with no comments, but thank you so much. Oh, wow. So, at um, Questing for Glory a while back, I did do the run as the Shepherd, which was a lot of fun. The Shepherd is a class that is such a joke. They are, um, they don't have magic. They're extremely weak. Um, and yeah, so it's sort of just a challenge, a, a challenge class. You do get uh, a flute, though. That's right. You get a flute that can put the enemies to sleep. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the shepherd. Uh, if you're looking for a challenge that you can play as a shepherd, um, in the so in my um, in my uh, marathon run, I did not do solo shepherd, which would be like the ultimate challenge. I actually like picked up uh, the, a partner, but you still have to do the final dungeon solo. So like if you pick the shepherd, you're gonna have to do the final dungeon as the shepherd with no with no help. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Wait, no, we don't want to buy. We want to we want to sell. Sell. So we're gonna sell this uh, this leather armor that we uh, borrowed from our former companions, and that's gonna give us uh, enough money real easily here. Uh, we're gonna sell. Actually, we're gonna sell like all our equipment, almost all of it. Yeah, there's some real heavy hitting items to pick up here. So you're gonna get the crossbow, which is pretty expensive in of itself. But uh, more importantly, you're gonna get the key, which unlocks basically every door in the game. Okay, and we're gonna sell that plus two sword. Uh, so the trick with this plus two sword, uh, we were uh, we saved up a lot of money. And uh, we bought this sword, and uh, well, then we did a, and then we took a death warp. The death warp actually resets your gold to 400 from whatever you had. Uh, okay. Uh, key. And let me make sure I remember to equip my new stuff here. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if we don't be equip it and we get into the battle, then uh, yeah, we'll be. Uh, it's actually not too bad because we can cast Blink uh, at this level. Uh, but yeah, so the trick with the uh, with the Death Warp was to uh, blow all our money on something and then take our take our little warp. And uh, when Lord British revives us, we get nine hundred. Uh, we get uh, four hundred gold, uh, and we get to keep the item that we bought. In this case, um, just one really expensive sword. And so that uh, helps us to get some gold really fast. 
And so here, we're going to max out your reagents. So your reagents are what you use to cast any spell in this game. All the reagent sellers are blind. Um, so you can actually just take advantage of them by giving them one gold and just get a massive amount of them. Um, they do have to actually be exact amounts or you'll end up repeating yourself asking you how many do you want. Yeah, if you try and get more than 99, and we want to get 99 of... Uh, we want to get close to 99 of uh, some of them because we're going to be close to, loop to using them all at the end. I'm just going to do a quick check here. Yep, we got them all. And this is also a special shop. Uh, so this is the only That's place right. in the world where you can buy manners, which is... Really yeah. awesome. And like the other ones, you can actually just buy it all for one gold. So very convenient. Um, again, a non-virtuous action. We cheated a blind, <laughs> we cheated a blind merchant. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a very Avatar-like thing to do, I guess. But it's okay. This is where the character arc starts bending back towards good. That's right, yeah. So we, you know, we're gonna... At this point, actually, I think that was our last, like, really non-virtuous action. Everything else we're gonna do is gonna be totally virtuous. We're gonna become uh, an absolute paragon. And uh, we started by giving to that beggar, and we actually gave our, all, our, all our gold to the beggar. Um, but we bought, since we fought an enemy, we got a little more gold that we can give to this beggar. And we're gonna give, we're gonna give it all. And the reason why we give it all is because if you give every last gold piece to the beggar, you gain not only compassion, but also sacrifice. And so we won't need to do like giving blood or anything else to get sacrifice. So that'll take care of uh, both of those. Yeah, so the first leg of the journey, you can kind of think of, you're just getting outfitted for the rest of, for the rest of the game. Yeah, and uh, that, that door there, we needed the key that we bought to open it and get in there. So that key was sort of an important access. Um, this leg here, we're actually gonna be increasing pretty much all the virtues to max. Um, when we're done with this, it's gonna be, you know, one, the only one that's gonna be left over is Valor, which, you know. We'll take the rest of the run to get, yeah. So the crossbow that we got does a little extra damage compared to our bow, and we're gonna be able to one-shot a lot of enemies, which is pretty nice. Uh, I need to take one more fight before we go into this town. And the reason is because we're gonna, we're gonna give to another beggar and we need some money. If you don't have any money and you talk to the beggar, um, they, it's not considered, it's not good because the beggar will ask. In this case, the beggar's name is Bob. I don't know if Bob's around, but uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's on hard times what he said he has leprosy or was it bubonic plague i think it was terminal leg rot terminal something. leg rot that's right it, it's definitely one of those <laughs> something like that so we'll give him all our money and uh and then we pick up the rune of compassion uh these runes are something we need to enter the shrines all right so we're gonna go back in lord british's castle now that we've got the key we've got access to some other areas of the castle Although, I guess we didn't need the key for this one, but it's still going to be pretty, pretty useful. So, every time we do a virtuous action, like give to the beggar, there's a cooldown where we've got to walk outside of town. And that kind of forces you to get some fights. But for this guy, there is no cooldown. We just uh, talk to him, and we get a bunch of virtue every time we give him the right answer, which is no. I'm hitting the B button to say no. We're going to do this 16 times. I think it's like three. I'm terrible at keeping count. So oh, we'll you're up to five now. Five, okay. <laughs> so, uh, seven. Oh, oh, the host says anything? Oh. We're going to be here for a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going to take a little while here. Thou art a wimp. I just want to remind everybody that we have a fantastic suite of prizes available. So if you want your chance to win one of those, please get your donation in. You have $15 from Kaios, who says, need more Aeon names. I totally agree. <laughs> okay, so that's like uh, 12, 13... 
Well, or... you were at 15. Oh, okay. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, okay, so that's it. Two more for good measure never hurts. That's right, yeah. I mean, you, there's no penalty for going over. <laughs> it, it caps out, but um, so that's why I kind of like... Um, I just keep going. Okay, so that that actually maxed out a whole bunch of our virtues, but we're going to... Uh, uh, we'll use those in a little bit here, but first we're going to take a back door from the castle that goes into a brutal dungeon. Except that we're we're just going to go in the dungeon and cast exit and come out, because when we come out, we're in uh, in the wood <laughs> out uh, on the balloon. So the yeah. balloon. No, oh yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, okay. The balloon is a, a convenient way to get around the world. There's certain places you can only get to with the balloon, or maybe only the balloon and, and maybe some other really, tri really uh, obtuse tricks. But the balloon, uh, we're going to take it. So you need. So the balloon just goes wherever the wind leads it. And uh, you can cast a wind spell that changes the wind's direction. So we did that. Of course, when Taskbot's playing, the wind just happens to be blowing in the right direction all the time. I, I can't have his luck, though. Yeah, the wind is pretty random. Yeah. So the wind, yeah. it randomly shifts as you're walking around in the outer world. Um, there's a counter. Uh, so, you know, it keeps track of the direction, and there's a counter saying the next time it's going to shift. And so when that counter gets to the end, it, um, it uh, shifts. And it may shift and pick the same direction. You won't, so then you won't know that it shifted. But so it's an it's a random you know thing that we can control in a task, but not <laughs> at all. And the other thing though is if you go into a town, then you know that it won't shift. So uh, next, we need to talk to more beggars to get our compassion and sacrifice here. And it just happens that in this castle, where we don't have anything else that we need, there's a beggar, like, right here. And it's so convenient. We're going to stop here. It's kind of on, you know, we've got the balloon. We're going to take the balloon a few other places. So it's kind of on the way on our balloon route. And so, real convenient. We're going to stop here and just give to this beggar seven times. So that was the second one. Uh, this, the bridge here has a higher encounter rate. So we're going to see the enemies on the bridge more often. and. The enemies on the bridge are always like trolls and ettons. Do I have time for one more donation? Sure. We have $25 from Musashi219 that says, The only thing better than playing Ultima? Playing Ultima to help raise money for NAMI and mental health awareness. Love seeing one of my favorite games in the series, Speedrun. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Hail Lord British. <laughs> <laughs> now, your previous runner's choice has already been met. We oh, are no. going to kill Lord British in Ultima 6. Do you have another one in mind? Do I have another one? Um, let's see. Are there any? Is there any? Um, are there any incentives left for Final Fantasy X AI after this? We do have the Final Fantasy X Skip Showcase that is currently at two hundred one dollars of three thousand. So, oh. that, okay, that makes the decision easy. We're going to go for that. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is number three? Four. Four, four, four. Yeah. Right. So just a few more rotations of this. Um, yeah. Like you said, we're going to be maxing out. Uh, this will be six virtues here. Yes. Six of the eight. So, and the other thing is we, we need that uh, valor, and every time we win one of these fights, it counts for valor. Even if the enemy dies on the lava field and we don't get any experience, it's winning the fight uh, is what's important. Okay, so that was number six. So one more. Now we need to pace because moving, it's uh, moving is uh, what satisfies the cooldown for the beggar. If you don't move and get that cooldown uh, to um, count down, then you won't get virtue. So you want to make sure that you, you know, uh, get your get credit for your for your good deeds here. So yeah, it's important to, to walk. Yeah, the game doesn't tell you that part. You can just continuously give money to beggars. 
Yeah. Yep. Or things but, like um, buying, you know, if, if you sell, if you take the right price at the shop or on the herb seller, uh, that's that's a good action. But, you know, if you do it multiple times, you're not going to get credit for it unless you go out and... And look at that! Task luck! Yeah, the wind's moving the, the right way. The wind's moving the right direction. <laughs> yeah, it, it's my my habit is just get on the balloon, see if the wind... You can, you can cast the wind spell before you get on the balloon, but, you know, Taskbot here is giving us, giving us the luck. Yeah, until then. Yeah. So we're going to be heading to kind of a hidden town called Cove here and pick up a couple important items. Yes. So Cove... There's one. There's another way to get to without the balloon, and that is to get uh, take a ship into a whirlpool, and that will uh, the whirlpool will bring you into the lake. I guess the other way is it, it's possible to spawn a ship on the lake, and then you can beat them, and then you've got a ship on the lake, and you can get to this town. Uh, so this sage gives us the um, the gate spell, which will be pretty useful. I mean, we're on a speed yeah. run, so you've got to imagine being able to teleport is pretty nice. Then up here, we're going to grab one of the items that's required to enter the final dungeon. Of course, that won't come into play in, for a long time. No. But. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of items that, like, because this game is largely a scavenger hunt. We've got to get all these items, and then we beat the final dungeon. And in some cases, like, you're not going to realize that you're missing it until the very end. So we want to make sure we get all these things. Hopefully we didn't miss anything yet. No, not yet. There's still time. <laughs> There's still plenty of items <laughs> left to miss or uh, get, hopefully. So there's one more thing we need the balloon for. And this one, like, you, you absolutely need the balloon. There's no other way to get to it because it's in the middle of these mountains here. So this is the uh, serpent spine. And uh, here we get the white stone. So there's eight stones, and you need to get them all. This is one of our scavenger hunt things here. The so, white, yeah. So the stones associated with six of the virtues are in dungeons that we'll get to a little bit later. Um, with the white and the black stone, and really like anything that's associated with uh, humility and, and spirituality, they're not where you think they would be. So yeah. spirituality technically has a dungeon, which we've been to. That's right. Yeah, that was the uh, the dungeon we warped out of to get the balloon. But the stone is completely hidden. And sort of the same thing for the black stone. Uh, it was in that new moon, moon gate, um, probably around five minutes or so into the run. Yeah. Okay, so here is our next NPC that we've got to talk to. And it's, it's not the girl, it's the fire. The fire's name is Flamis. And, uh, you know, when you talk to it, they ask you, you know, has thou always lived rightly? And again, when we say no, uh, you know, fear not, the, uh, a single honest man is worth a hundred liars. Yay. So this one we only have to do 13 times. I think that was like four or five. Yeah, you're on five now. Okay. So here's six. Um, this is the town of Yu in the forest. And uh, the, the girl over there is Jana the Druid, who's one of the characters you can play as, but we're, we're not going to get her. That was 9 or 10? Yeah, that was 10. Okay. 11. 12. And there's just a couple important things you have to pick up here. Um, we're going to be going to get these Rune of Justice. Yes. And also the Squish Bell. We're going to get really squishy here. <laughs> yeah. So the learning, there's a certain number of spells that you get starting out with. And then you can learn more spells. The requirement is you have to talk to an NPC somewhere. And then you have to, af oh, after you... Um, after you talk to them, you're going to have to go to uh, Spells Unlimited in Moonglow and uh, register the spell. And almost always, the NPC will tell you, like, here's how you cast this spell, and, um, you know, here's the ingredients. Because you have to remember the ingredients when you register it. 
Um, but for the one, the one exception was Tremor, which is just crazy to actually acquire because you, you talk with like three different NPCs that give you different pieces. And it seems like maybe you talk with all three and then you get it. Ooh, okay, so we're, our moon, actually I'm gonna wait on the town. So for this leg, it's gonna wrap back around to the town of Britain, uh, back at Lord British's castle. Um, but there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can walk back, or if you catch the right moon cycle, then it'll take you right back um, that way. Um, that way you can skip a few encounters that you may not want to take. Yeah, around this point in the run, you can get a little bit more selective with what you do want to take here. Um, you may not want to fight some of the longer fights. That's right, yeah. Okay, so, get back here. Um, we're, yeah, we're gonna get a second person in our party, and that will increase... Uh, so, we're gonna do some dungeon diving. And when we start, you know, really dungeon diving, we'll get a lot of fights that don't aren't subject to the uh, as you get more uh, as you get more. Uh, so when we have more characters in our party, the random encounters get more enemies. But the dungeon battles are always the same. So if we have two characters, we'll be we'll have a better chance at the dungeon fights. Um, so how you're meant to progress in this game is kind of talk to NPCs and then narrow down the location of these runes. The runes essentially act as a key to these shrines. And once you enter these shrines, if you have 99 in that particular virtue, you can talk to the Ankh and the, the Ankh will grant you partial avatarhood, um, yes. kind of putting the capstone on that. Now, you can still go backwards. You can still lose virtue. Yeah. <laughs> but it's considered complete. So when you meditate at the shrine to get your virtue, um, there's a cooldown. Your thoughts get weary. And so if you go from one shrine to another real fast, it'll you know tell you like, oh, you, you, uh, your thoughts are weary from your last meditation. So uh, part of the route is that we want to make sure that we don't go to every shrine right away. So we'll kind of be spreading them out, but we do have to go to all eight of them eventually. I'm just here going to grab the Silver Horn. And if you're familiar with the Ultima series, you may have seen this a time or two. I'm not going to take this fight. So we cast this Blink spell, and we get out of the battle. Kind of a get out of... It's not running. It's magically blinking the fight. I'm not sure why. You know, okay, in other Ultima games, the Blink spell is a, uh, a spell that lets you teleport between... Uh, it lets you teleport uh, kind of like a certain distance, and you can actually use it to get to places like the Serpent Spine because you can teleport like across mountains or across uh, across like water. I think in this game they just had it so uh, the enemies blink and you're gone. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that's it. You, you blink and you get away from the enemies real fast. I went a little bit off uh, off track there, but we're... We're back on. So we're coming up on the town of Moonglow. Um, in here, we have actually some, some invaluable resources. We're going to yes. be picking up the next party member um, that's going to be staying pretty much until the end. Uh, so Mariah, she starts out with 50 MP, which I think is the highest you can get off the line. Yes. And the only so requirement to be able to cast a spell is to have enough MP to do it. So 50 MP is enough to cast every single spell. We're on a noble quest and you can come along. So bringing her in the dungeon is going to be real helpful because she can just, um, like in the first round of battle, she can bring out uh, uh, the big guns of magic and then we can clean up with our crossbow. We'll say we've been here before. I guess that doesn't count as a lie. And then we uh, register. You have to tell which you have to answer the quiz. Which runes, uh, which uh, regents are required? It's a bit easy for Gate and Tremor because it's basically the same recipe. Just yep. 
one of the ingredients is Switch. But Squish, it has four, so it's a little bit easier to uh, <laughs> to make yeah. that much fizzle out. But it feels like, I mean, everything uses Ash, so it's kind of annoying that we can run out of it. We're going to have to be a little bit careful at some points. But it, it does kind of feed into my spell selection sometimes. The um, So there's an ice spell that I really like, and that one doesn't use Ash. So, like, if it, if, it's, if it helps, I'll use the ice spell all the time, and it avoids using Ash, which saves, uh, saves a lot of our regents. From here, there's just a quick stop at the Lyceum, picking up the Book of Knowledge and rolling out. Uh, that's, so that's the second item that's required to enter the final dungeon. So there's three castles of uh, principle. Cause, so we've got eight virtues, and the eight virtues, like there's this Venn diagram of the, the principles and the, the virtues, where uh, the three principles become eight virtues. And uh, so there's a castle corresponding to each principle. So this is the, uh, the castle of love, or truth, truth, the Lyceum, the castle of truth. And then there's a castle of courage, the serpent's hold was the one where we gave to the beggar a bunch of times. There wasn't actually anything we needed there. It just happens that the book is in the castle there, whereas the other castles don't actually have the item. I'm gonna skip this one. Now it's about time for some dungeon diving. Oh yeah. Get a couple heals on our... We're gonna lose some MP in a little bit here. Ah! No, I don't. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Is it, we can blink yeah, away from the pirates. Can, the pirates yeah. take too long to, to beat, so we don't want to bother with them anymore. The pirates really come at you in this game, and they're fast. They're, they're very fast. Okay, so here's our first dungeon, Dungeon Deceit. Uh, so we're going to be getting the, the blue stone out of this dungeon. Um, each one of these dungeons is just named for the opposite of whatever the virtue uh, associated with it is. So, Honesty. We're close to the town of Honesty, Moonglow. This is Deceit here. And then right in this first, um, let's call it encounter room, <laughs> um, you can see how useful Mariah is. So you can cast these energy fields, which have been useful since the start of the game, and just have the enemies just trek through them. At this point, you don't need experience, so that doesn't necessarily matter. Yeah, it saves so much time to not get experience from the enemies because we can just, uh, if we just put up the energy field and let the enemies walk to their doom on the on the the fire field here, they uh, they end up. Uh, we don't get experience, so you know you can see every time we shoot one of them like that, we actually we have to go through this um, dialogue of like you you beat you know you beat the enemy, you get experience, um, and we if we don't need to do that, we can save some time. Okay, and, so... Yeah, and coming up here, there's going to be an orb. Um, so there's just orbs just like scattered throughout these dungeons that have various effects. Um, the one coming up is going to increase NP for whoever touches it. Um, and we want Selen to touch the orb, um, so we can start casting energy spells as well. well I'm gonna... And, yeah, I'm gonna like, skip the... Spells, but... I'm gonna skip the first, uh, first one. We're only gonna bother doing it once. That'll give Selen enough MP to cast the Squish spell. Yeah, yeah, squish. And so as long as, you know, as long as they can use Squish and Energy, I think we're, uh, we'll be in pretty good shape. Because Mariah, she can start using, uh, she can use Squish. She can use uh, Tremor, and she can also cast, uh, yeah, she, so she can cast Squish, Tremor, and Gate. So that'll cover... Uh, that'll cover, like, all of the hardcore level spells that we need to cast. And then there's a... Uh, everything changes once we become the Avatar, because our MP, one of the bonuses of becoming the Avatar, is that your MP max changes to 99, no matter what class you are or 
any stats or anything, you automatically have 99 max MP. This is a pretty good encounter here. Yeah. There are random encounters in the dungeon. Um, they, it counts up pretty slowly. And only when you're, if you're, you know, uh, it counts when you're not moving. So if you keep moving, you won't get random encounters in the dungeon. So we won't get a lot of encounters as long as I keep moving fast. But so here is our stone. Okay, I have a deep question for you, Smelling Troll. Dost thou ever lie to thyself or to others? Well. Well. <laughs> well. Well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is when they ask you in the bottom of the dungeon, the answer is always yes. So if you know that, you know that it's uh, it's uh, a little easier. Uh, so this was the shrine of honesty. So now we have our virtue of honesty. Uh, and yeah, at the bottom of the dungeons, like I feel like the playtesters didn't make it to all of the bottom to all of those uh, people, and so. The, the dialogue doesn't always make sense. Yeah, we'll get some, some funny bits of that a bit later on. Um, so, go to the Shrine of Honesty and just gonna sail pretty much directly east and it lines up that you get to another dungeon and also trigger that cooldown uh, that you need for the, the shrines. Yes, yeah, so um, it's 60 steps, which is quite a quite a big a bit of travel and remember you got to move you can't just stand still for six for a certain amount of time you have to actually move so we'll route that in after this we'll we'll have uh our thoughts will be all recovered from our meditation do i have time for a donation absolutely it's on brand uh we have fifty dollars from deniable credibility who says I realized my <laughs> compassion and sacrifice virtue was a bit low, so here's another donation during one of my favorite sleeper game series of all time. This run is a real shot in the nostalgia. Thanks. That's right. I, I don't. Uh, I don't know what uh, prizes you'll get for your virtuous action, but you know it can't hurt to be uh, show whatever uh, <laughs> compassion or sacrifice. It's fine to be rewarded, right? That's right. Okay, so we're gonna break out our tremor spell here and see how it does. Yeah, so the way tremor works is that you can essentially take out one to eight enemies, but it's completely random. Um, if it does hit, then it's an insta-kill. Actually, it's zero, so you can get a zero tremor. That's well. right, yeah. Tremor can That's completely zero. whiff, which is annoying. So you can just throw 40 MP in the void. Okay, so everyone's poisoned. We're going to go ahead and cure them. Cure poison. Uh, wait, no, we got to go up higher. And so one of the techniques they use to throw you off quite a bit in these dungeons are false walls. And there should be one right here. Yeah, so we came through there. Uh, since I know the way through the dungeon, like, I don't necessarily have to have the lights on. But um, I'll, I'll keep them on because it's kind of disorienting to not have, uh, not see where you're going. And then we come up on one of the tree enemies that we saw earlier. Except this time is kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah, the, the trees are one of the more dangerous enemies because they can put you to sleep. And there's no guarantee how many turns you'll be asleep before you wake up. And you can kind of compound that problem if, that, if the enemy that puts you to sleep has a lot of other enemies orbiting them. Um, where they can just move up and just kind of beat you up while you're down. Um, fortunately, it's not the case for that particular room. but we will see that coming up. Here we're gonna get some more value from that energy spell. 
like even after we get access to these you know ultimate magics that can kill everything instantly we're still going to use energy a lot just because um we it's it's just so tactically useful okay so we're almost to the end to the stone room here here's the stone okay so let's see how this one is Seeker of Avatar Hood, do you swear to guide Britannia along the path of honor for as long as you shall draw breath? Never forget thy oath. Okay, so I think the playtesters got here. Yes, absolutely. Which is interesting, because this dungeon is like the furthest, like one of the furthest out of the way. I wasn't a playtester, but the dialogue makes sense. Okay, so I want to make sure we got enough MP here, because we're going to wait for the double, the double full moons. And then we're going to cast a uh, gate to uh, my map and do the Shrine of Spirituality. So again, with anything associated with humility or spirituality, it's just not going to be in the place that you think it might be. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, famously, it's the, the double full moons is what you gets you into the Shrine of Spirituality. And from here, we can walk down to the Shrine of Sacrifice. There. Yeah, again, moving just straight east. Um, it's far enough to satisfy that cooldown, so it works out in the routing. Okay, we don't need to pick up any money anymore. I picked up a little bit earlier, which we'll, which we'll need, but, uh... I'm getting some easy fights here. Yeah, these are good. Yeah, yeah, three enemies is, you know, it's annoying to have three enemies, but, like, we can take these guys, they're, like, so, so easy. And you can get Mariah involved. Yeah, her, like, she just has a staff, but, like, it's good enough to bash these skeletons, because they're so weak. And uh, using the melee attacks, the melee attacks never miss, and they don't add to the counter that uh, gets you your misses on your missile attacks. So if I have a chance, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do, I'll get in more melee attacks to avoid those misses. Okay, uh, now let's see. Gate to you and do that one. So a neat little detail. Uh, when you do start getting partial avatar hood is that when you bring up your status, um, there's a new screen that pops up behind it that starts forming an, an onk. Yeah, and yeah. You'll, you'll get a little piece of it each time. So when you get all the pieces of avatar hood, you'll have a, a full onk there. Well, another miss. That expo, you know, it's pretty good, but all of the bows have the same accuracy there's uh they just they're gonna miss every few shots okay so this is the shrine of justice we had to, a bit of a walk from the moon gate all the way out here so that was again satisfied our, our cooldown and with this leg of the run uh it's really easy to just forget something um, yeah. Because you're just kind of warping around from point to point to point. And a lot of the stuff you can actually do in any order. Um, as long as you satisfy the cooldowns, you're, you're all good. Um, but I will say that if you forget something, uh, it, it can take a while to, to hit a backup in this game. Yeah. Uh, oh, not enough. <laughs> right, getting nailed by these snakes. We've gotten pretty lucky on battles, actually. Oh, didn't need this gold. So every time you get a chest, it asks you who you want to open the chest. And it doesn't matter at all who opens it. I think, you know, in a lot of the Ultima games, there's a mechanic where you can get trap chests, and that does not happen in this game. Oh, there. Yeah, this, this entry actually is quite a bit easier than Ultima 3, which had a lot of 
this kind of party management stuff with with food and, and traps and all sorts of deal, all sorts of things like that. Yeah, yeah. They really they simplified it. And they made it more like an art, like a JRPG. But there's still, you know, a big. I mean, the world is still pretty open, and there's a huge scavenger hunt with a lot of, you know, uh, questions as far as like where to go when, like. So, it was a. It's a really interesting puzzle to to route this, uh, the speed run and the tasks. I'm gonna use the ice spell here because the ice spell does a little more damage than our uh, than our expo. Man, that, that's, yeah. <laughs> Some of the sometimes the pirate ship is super fast and it just we can't get away from it. One trick is if the pirate ships if he's out of the way then I'll kind of like move diagonally so that he'll stay on screen and then you know. The one since he's out of the way, I don't have to worry about. It. Another trick, I go, I move him off screen, and now since he's off screen, he despawns right away. Hey, what did you pick up there? Oh, that was uh, the skull. I thought you didn't like using that. Well, you know, it's not a good thing to use it, but um, we'll see. Is so, you know, we've got this incentive to kill Lord British, and that is one of the things that can kill Lord British. Uh, but there, there is a hardcore way to kill him without the skull that I've discovered. So we're going to try and do it the hard way. And then, um, then we'll also do it the easy way. And the easy way is to just use that skull. It's so easy. It, it would be so easy if we could just use that skull to annihilate every enemy. So we got this, uh, this um, item that can instantly destroy every enemy. It also kills all the NPCs if you could use it in a town. And so it's just, it's so evil that you're not, if, if you use it, you lose like a whole bunch of different virtue points. Yeah, so Mondane was a pretty bad guy. He was, he was a villain in the first Ultima game. And you, you see his effects in, in a couple more. Get around this ship, <laughs> okay. I think this is the only game where you can use any object associated with him. Yeah, yeah, is the skull. No, because at the end of this game, you throw the skull in the abyss, so it it, it would be, it would be, uh, I guess it would it wouldn't uh, be con nope. uh, continuity if you got it back. Okay, here's our horn. We use our nope. horn, and it makes a weird sound. It shouldn't have. Well, this is just a random fight. Yeah, so it's funny how that worked out. So around the shrine of humility. Uh, you will get a full party of Balrogs that will just attack you um, every step, um, unless you play the Silver Horn there. Yeah. So he played it and then just happened to get a random, uh, appropriately, a, a party of trolls there. Yep. And when you, uh, and then after the fight, you get pushed back so that you'll never actually be able to walk to the shrine. You have to use, you have to use the horn. So that was the Shrine of Humility. This is the this is the, the most remote shrine to get to. So uh, let's see. And then the next one, actually, we're going to go to Britain. And if, and, we were to, oh, uh, huh? if we were to back up a little bit, um, while he was out there in the ocean, he did pick up the bell, which is the oh, final right. object that he needs to yes. enter the abyss. So there's the, uh, the Bell of Courage, the Book of Truth, and the... Um, the candle of uh, love. That's pretty good for being a party of wizards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the expo is so nice. We can one shot so many enemies, including those wizards. Um, so for the next leg here is gonna be some more dungeon diving, but with a little bit of a twist. Yeah, so we're going in the top of the dungeon here. Uh, well, we go into the entrance from the from the outer world into the dungeon, and when you do that, you always, of course, it makes sense. You, you're on floor number one, but every dungeon actually. So there's a um, a network of altar rooms that connect every dungeon, and those are always on the eighth floor, and so we can actually uh, move between dungeons. Now well, this guy just doesn't like it. He doesn't want to move. <laughs> we want to make sure that we don't... Uh, 
we don't take a death before we want to. Okay, now we'll cast our light. Yeah, so this is the second longest dungeon uh, as it's done in the speed run. Yeah. It could be worse if we went from the bottom. Uh, squish. And again, these rooms are just kind of done with a combination of either squish or tremor or energy. Um, sometimes you can throw an ice spell in there. Um, this one specifically, you can go for the Beholders. Uh, the Beholders are just another enemy that can put you to sleep. Yeah, I was kind of hoping he walks on the lava. That, we got lucky. He attacked us, but doesn't... He attacked us twice and didn't put us to sleep. Usually that attack puts you to sleep. Uh, but, yeah, I was hoping he... W yeah, he just eventually needed to walk on that lava. Okay. And here... So the ice does a little more damage, and it's enough to one-shot these uh, sea snakes, which are uh, we can't quite do with our with our expo. So every time you cast magic and you use some MP, there's a you're going to have to pace and recover that MP. So you kind of have to make you know there, there's a judgment call of whether it's worth. Uh, worth the time that you're going to have to pace well if you're if you have you know some way to go and you're, you'll naturally gain mp back oh, there. cast there energy there these little goblins in uh in most of the versions of ultima like the, the goblins can like take your food which is super annoying but in this game there's no well, there's no food, so it makes it uh, a little simpler. I've always loved the sprites for the goblins in this version. Like, they have li the little party hats on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cute. Okay, I'm going to get another heal in here. i make sure that we get through here all right. We've got another fake wall. Yeah, and this is about the, the end of the dungeon. Um, we do get introduced to um, kind of a new mechanic to the, to the run. Um, so there are actually false walls inside these encounter rooms as well. And you can see on the right side there uh, where that Titan is standing. Um, he was actually in there. So enemies can move on to it and just reveal them for you. But oftentimes the, the room isn't laid out so that can happen. Uh, but once you step on that tile, it reveals, well, it knocks out a wall. I guess I guess that's happened in the, in the room before that, but still. So the end of this dungeon, we just got a beggar who asks us for money, and we better make sure we have some money here, because if you don't have anything to give him, uh, he will not be happy. He'll throw you out of the dungeon, and you won't get your stone. You're so, so close, yet so far. Okay, so now we will get to Trinzik. This is the last shrine we need in this leg. I probably should have avoided using magic because we're going to have to use gate after this. See if we get enough MP back. Not quite. The gate is 40. Uh, yeah, I think it's we're on there. 35, yeah, it's, it's like high 30s or 40. So this is the Shrine of Honor, which is the first rune we picked up. Okay, so now we're down to just one uh, shrine. Uh, okay. Oh, and okay, I don't, I want to go to Jellum, but I don't want to do it when the Moon Gate is up, because then we would warp right afterwards and I'm not gonna bother healing my poison because uh, we're gonna take we're gonna take a death warp and when Lord British uh, revives us we're gonna he's gonna give us a full heal that's gonna get rid of our um, that's gonna clear our poison recover our health all sorts of good stuff so we can just not worry about that and go straight in 
So you get the rune for this shrine, but you don't you don't go around to the shrine for a little bit. Yeah, so the shrine is actually on a separate island right across the, the way. But that's the one where we need the 49 random encounters. We're probably pretty close now. Yeah, 90 by my count. So if we talk to Lord British, we could probably get another level, but that would make the random encounter enemies stronger. So we'll just hold off on that because level four is easily enough to finish the game. So we're going to take that same back entrance into Dungeon Hithloth. This time we're actually going to uh, conquer the dungeons. And so just like earlier, I'm just going to go into Hithloth and just take that one ladder all the way down to the bottom. Um, with Hithloth, it's associated with spirituality again. Um, so you can run around in this dungeon and not actually accomplish anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's no stone. Actually, I think there's a stone room, and if you go in it, they just say, like, the stone's, the stone's missing. Sorry. But Hithloth has the property where there's, there's orbs, and if you touch the orbs, you gain every stat. You also take six. Oh, uh, you also take 600 HP of damage, which is going to kill you unless you're at a really high level. But you know, if you're if you're all right, you, you you do gain your you do gain your stats in death. So right. what we want here is to get down here and hit these junction points. Um, yeah. Again, since it's Hithoth, it's spirituality, it's associated with all three principles. So you can actually get to all three altar rooms here. So we went into the dungeon of Covetous, which is the antithesis for sacrifice. Um, we went into the altar room of love. So there's three altar rooms. There's an altar room for each principle. And each principle will connect to, uh, oh, he casted. Uh, each altar room connects to the, the dungeons corresponding to the virtues of the principle. That's funny. These, these gargoyles only do two things. They cast reflect and they take down their reflect. <laughs> <laughs> now, outside that, they're not doing much. They're just moving around. Okay, so here's the stone. Let's see if the developers got here, the playtesters. Art thou one who would withhold the gift of thy own blood from a dying companion? As we know, the answer is yep. always yes. Then thou art worthy to receive the stone of sacrifice. Okay, so here's our orange stone. Uh, so we only need two more now. And so instead of going up the stairs and going back to the dungeon entrance, I'm just going to more or less backtrack down to the eighth floor and then hit the junction point in a separate altar room. Yes. So since this is the dungeon of um, for sacrifice, and sacrifice is um, courage and love, uh, we came into the to, for, through the altar room of love, but we're going to exit to the altar room of courage. So that's why we're going a, a different uh, different way than we came in here. Yeah, it's very easy to get to, thankfully. It's literally just in front of you on the eighth floor. Yep. So uh, the next one is the dungeon Destard, which corresponds to Valor. And uh, the fun fact is that it's... Oh, I was going to say, we're going to be able to get, get it without any fights, but we get a random a random dungeon battle here. Yeah, if the host is anything. Um, yeah, this, yeah. Is, uh, this is a good time. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward dungeon here. Sure thing. We have $25 from Houston Hoosier. No comment. And we have $20 from Blue Guitar Things, who says, NAMI is a super important organization, and these runs are super entertaining to watch. Love the stream, keep it up, and feel amazing about yourselves 
as you do to contributing for, to such a worthwhile cause. Okay. We are $300 away from $11,000, so keep Ooh. those donations coming in. So as we saw, the next question was, Dost thou flee from the malevolent face of danger? The answer always being yes. I guess it's just a trick, uh, a trick question here. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> So again, just turning back. Yeah, we have Go this with... room that has the bridge, but there's no enemies, so I'm just yep, going towards eighth floor, and then actually going to pick up uh, another item here. Um, so this item is only obtainable if you have the right stones. So in each altar room, you can put the stones in. So we've got uh, red, uh, white orange and purple and we get the key of courage the, the key is one of the so there's a key for each principle and it's one of these things where we're going to have to get all three and if we miss one we won't learn about it until the very very end so we better remember these oh let's start light here and wrong if you enter through the altar of truth it's the easiest dungeon in the game. You more or less just go straight forward and then you have this one room here. Yep, not bad at all. So at the in the stone room of each dungeon, you can uh, take the stairway. We saw we did that in the other one. We just took that stairway in the back and um, end up we end up at the uh, entrance to the dungeon. And you can do that here, but we don't want to because we want to continue back into the dungeon so that we can get uh, do the other ones from the stone or from the altar rooms. All right, here's the next one. Dost thou seek to uphold justice along the course of thy travel? That seems pretty normal. I cannot grant you the stone. Leave this place. Okay, well, maybe they didn't quite get here. Okay, so here's our green stone of justice. That was the last stone. So now we'll be able to to go the right way. So if you do actually answer no there, uh, he says the same thing, except he actually means it that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you answer the wrong way, um, they get mad and they kick you out of the dungeon. You get sent you get sent back out to the, the entrance and you don't get your stone. Oh, we got put to sleep. Wait, oh, let's see. An attack there. Oh, right. I'm, neg yeah, I'm negated. Here, here. Yeah, here to cast that. negate. Which is good for sleep, at least. That's right, yeah. The, the, um, the tree can't put me to sleep. Okay, so we've got to um, head back a little bit here to uh, get our stones, or get our keys for, with our stones, and then uh, our dungeon diving here will be complete. Okay, here's our stone. Blue, um, uh, purple, green. white, and green. The key of truth. Do you know your primary so colors? <laughs> so, all three of these keys form just one long key called the three of uh, the key of three parts that's required to finish the final dungeon um, just like the stone rooms you can get to the end of the dungeon and just get rejected if you don't have this all right uh, let's see we have fmp gate to yellow so we are getting close here to the end where we're going to I think we're probably pretty good on Valor. Um, we do need, so since we had a, um, a shrine, we don't actually count the counter down in our shrine or, or while we're in the dungeon. So we, we need to uh, cool down a little bit on our, on our, uh, uh, for our cool down for meditation. 
Okay, you have 92 by my count, but I, I know I missed a, oh, a couple okay. towards the beginning. Let, let's hope we missed a few. And I'll I'll probably get two more fights. So the ship counts as a as a fight. And um I'll probably get two more fights. And so we'll we'll hope that we're off by enough. Because I, I always I do the same thing. Yeah, it's so easy to autopilot in the beginning. Yeah. The the way I do it is I I, I put like a um an add-on to my uh, live split, and you can you can add like an extra counter. Okay. Get the ship. We'll just take the ship over a little bit, because every space that you sail counts as a, a step for your your shrine cooldown. There's one. Yeah, I mean, we haven't blinked that many fights, but we also, I feel like, yeah, we, we, we've been pretty streamlined on our fights. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go for one more fight, and then we'll hope that, that we're, uh, we're at 99. Please, okay. okay. Well, it's appropriate again. There's trolls. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay. The Shrine of Valor. Let's see if we're good here. Have we been valorous enough? Avatar yeah, Who Design! All right. He says, gather thy courage in thy arms and seek to conquer the abyss. And um, we're, we're not going to go to the abyss. We're not going to gather the arms. So after you get Avatar Hood, you can actually go to the castles of truth and love and pick up like ultimate armor and the ultimate melee weapon. But we're 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 fine with what we got here. Um, what we want to do though is we're going to save our game. And this is uh, we're going to stay at the inn. You know we didn't do this for the most of the run because you don't really need it. You can just heal. Um, but this was important because we're going to do the Lord British incentive that everyone paid for. So. Thank you very much for, for donating for the Lord British incentive. Uh, we're going to have Mariah warp us to Castle Britain here, and we're going we're gonna to see see how this works. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> and I stupidly said that. There's that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, actually, we can, we, can, we can gate now, so we got nine. So becoming the Avatar gives us 99 MP. I want to recover yeah. my MP before we go in here, but... The only okay. kind of, like, minor drawback, I'd say, to the gate spell is that you... When you warp, you warp to the same tile that the gate That's spawns right, yeah. on. So, so if the gate is there, like it was... I was really careful about it earlier, and I, there was a couple times where, like, I waited for another moon cycle so that I, I wouldn't have that happen. But then I, that time, I was, I was too excited to get here to Lord British. Yeah, and even if you're holding a direction, your character doesn't move right away, so it, it's going to catch you. So he's really happy, you know, he hails us as the master of virtues. Um, and I'm gonna tell him, we're gonna tell him that we're not enjoying good health as well. And he'll give us a free heal. That's gonna make it a little easier. Cause we're gonna, there's this been this attack item on our menu here. We haven't used it at all. Cause there's really no point, but we're gonna go up to Lord British and just say attack. And it's gonna cost us some virtues. You know, we say, that's, this is why we saved our game here. Um, and, no, okay, actually what we want to do, move him there, cast energy there. So, Lord British is so strong, he doesn't take a lot of damage, he doesn't take like, uh, most of your attacks just do no damage, but he does take damage like any other enemy, he takes damage from going on the lava fields. And so, we're just gonna cheese this by moving around and letting him walk on the lava fields until he dies. And you know, he does he's he doesn't move every time. He's been really, really behave he's behaving really well for us here. He does have some attacks like that. He can <laughs> so he can use his own lava field. And like, so if we attack, you'll see it did one damage. Oh, now he has reflect up. We're 
I guess yeah. all that's gonna do. <laughs> so it could take a while. Lord British does have a lot of HP, and the damage you take on energy fields is randomized. Yes. It's very random. It's from 0 to 30. So you, you could step and actually take no damage, which is kind of seems weird, but I had a lot of fun with that in the task, manipulating the damage. Um, like, the the trick that I was able to do was finish the game with one HP, which we're, we're, we're not going to try to do, but... <laughs> so if we keep moving back, if, we, if he behaves for us like he is, like he cast ice, okay, great. Um, we have uh, Mariah heal us to keep our HP up. And there it is. There's yep. killing Lord British the hard way. Um, but so that was the hard way. And, you know, we're not the Avatar anymore, but he doesn't care. It doesn't seem to phase him at all. So um, we're going to try and beat him a different way. And what we have here, we got our skull. We might as well use it. And what the skull does, it, it just annihilates the enemy. You can annihilate any enemy like this, but it's so evil that you know, we, we're not supposed to use it. And even now, he still says, like, oh, he doesn't care. So the, the really evil thing to do is just to use the skull in the outer world. And now everyone's dead, including Lord British, and we can actually take his throne. Because if you can't take his throne, you know, is he really dead? So this yeah. was killing Lord British. So um, thank you, everyone who donated. OK, so we're going to rewind a little bit here to before we killed Lord British, when we saved at the Inn and Jellum, and we were an avatar, a paragon of virtue. So we're back to being, uh, we're back to being the avatar, the paragon of virtue, who has been charged to seek out the final dungeon and finish this game off. You just want to say there's something a bit ironic with killing Lord British with the skull of his greatest enemy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but an interesting thing about the skull, uh, you, you touched on it a bit earlier. Um, in the DOS version of this game, um, it, it's actually required to toss a mundane skull into the abyss to open the way. Yes. And we'll get a little blurb about that, but it, it's not required to get the skull in this version of the game. Um, but since we have it, we'll get a little blurb where it says, like, you toss it in. Um, because if in the Abyss, you can no longer lose your avatar hood. And so it would just make it too easy. Oh, no, that stupid <laughs> ship. I can't despawn, and we're just going to blink. <laughs> it's always annoying. We've had to blink a lot of pirate ships, which is... I mean, some of these fights I could probably do, and then... But... I think the blink spell uses uh, silk web. That's really like the only, the only one we have to worry about. So at this point, you don't have to worry too much about Mariah. Um, she's going to be leaving here in a second. Yeah. So I'm going to use her MP to heal us so we can save ours. All right. And here's where we use the bell. The bell rings on and on. It doesn't ring on and on unless you're at this exact spot. Man. I'm gonna kill them. Luckily, that doesn't interrupt anything. Yeah. Um, so, so you actually have to use these items in order. Yes. Um, bell, book, and candle. So uh, the book resonates with the sound of the bell and the candane. So, and there's our skull. The skull, I guess the skull just crumbled. We didn't actually throw it in. But we've lost the skull. And so here's the abyss, the final dungeon. And it's a tough one. Yes. Um, luckily, in some of these rooms, you have energy fields that are just there natively. So it kind of helps out a little bit. And sometimes we get Tremor killing all the enemies yeah. that, in one shot. That's, that's always nice. Um, there are going to be a few rooms with enemies that can cast sleep uh, multiple enemies, which does become a bit of a problem when you're yes. solo. Yeah, and we've only got one character here, so... 
my kind of default strategy is tremor to like narrow to like whittle down the field of enemies and then squish to get rid of their health and then we go to our bow but depending on what happens there, there's other there's other strats you can do sometimes just energy is good enough and since in this so in this final dungeon like we get one room after another so every time we uh, every time we beat a beat a room we're gonna have to just pace around to get our MP back so we really have to kind of think every time we cast a spell like is it worth it is it worth it to the MP because we're gonna have to do this pacing and blow some time you also start to get a bit low on reagents at this point yes so you really have to be precise with what you cast Yeah, most of the rooms will have these hydras. Yeah, they're really tanky, and they can have a they can shoot fireballs at you. And when they shoot their fireball, you get um, you get fire around your feet, but it doesn't actually hurt you. You actually have to move onto it. So moving off of it doesn't even do anything. Actually, we're pretty good because we're gonna get a, there's a fountain here. Is a free heal. Pretty convenient. Okay, and okay. so to progress through the the abyss, uh, it's not like a, the it's not like the other dungeons where you just you know descend through ladders no. and, and find your way through. Um, you have to find your way to this sort of goblet at the end of each at the end of each floor, um, which does ask you uh, a question. So it's a bit of a knowledge Dude, check. That was another full tremor. So the odds yeah, of yeah. that that was five enemies. The odds of that are getting down to like less than oh, it's, it's maybe like three or four percent. Like it's pretty low. Maybe less than that. Actually, we'll do it this way. Yeah, take out the problem first. Oh, so. very nice. Yeah, that was pretty lucky. The flames usually need um, two steps to die, but sometimes they die in one. Um, but yeah, for progressing through the abyss, uh, so you'll get that knowledge check at the end of each floor. Um, but you don't you don't have to think too hard about it because it just literally goes down the list, yep. left to right, top to bottom. As long as you remember <laughs> where you are on the list, yeah. like it'll all work out. Yeah, so you just have to yeah pair that off with which floor you're on. But if you get it wrong, it's bad. Like you get kicked out, and you got to start all over. Yeah, the the follow up question will actually be exactly the same, or the exactly the same position on the menu. Okay, we only got one enemy with our tremor, but it was the important one. Yeah, the the problem was gone. Let's see. I think we'll use ice here. Yeah, these gargoyles, they're they are pretty funny. Um, you can put out an energy field, but a lot of the time they don't like to move around on it. <laughs> yeah. At least for me. They'll do all they can to kind of move around it. And they can float on water, so they, they have options. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have some movement <laughs> options to get away. They float on water, but they do take damage on lava. So I, I'm not sure what the logic is, but... I think maybe it's the heat. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you've also got the, the, um, the Hydra monsters that seem like they're fire demons, but they actually, they also take damage on the lava. Okay, so here we actually have a secret <laughs> wall. <laughs> they, they, they try to trick you here. They give you a ladder. <laughs> and if you take the ladder, you get, wow, you're out of the dungeon. So these first few floors do have some tricks. Still going there. Um, through here is going to be one of the scarier rooms. Um, not necessarily these gargoyles, but what's behind them. Yeah, there's uh, basically any enemy that... It's the enemies that can put you to sleep that you have to worry about. And we get quite a few of them. Oh, did he cast Reflect? He did. He casted yeah. Reflect, yeah. Again. 
I was hoping that he would step in. Cause, so the reflect, it reflects your missile shots, but not your melee attack. So if you get in close, they're gone. All right, courage. The redstone. Uh, okay, and then here. Yeah, just another fake wall, and then we get a room full of beholders. Yay. I mean, there's only three of them, but they can put us to sleep just like that. And I've got this lava field down, so hopefully they'll they'll li they'll die on this lava field pretty fast. I'm gonna use Squish to speed that along. Squish does proportional damage on the enemies, so it will um, bring them down. Like I think maybe it's so it's like it's, there's a random factor. It's between like 50% um, uh, to 75% or something like that. This room we're just gonna use our bow. Yeah, the, the one thing that room has going for it is that it's just, it's literally just a choke point. Um, if you've yep. been keeping track, energy is pretty much going into the choke point so you can maximize the enemy movement on, on the field. Um, for a lot of the rooms where enemies are kind of spread out and there's not really a choke point, you can just kind of cast Trimmer and see what you get there. It's a little bit faster to take a gamble. All right. Truth and love. That would be justice. Okay, now we're up to level five, and we've got another, uh, another spring. We can get a free heal. Okay, this room. But yeah, almost every room is going to be a tremor. In the task, what we do is we... Uh, I use Tremor in every room, and it always kills every enemy, but that's the odds of that are pretty insane, so... We've been getting some pretty good Tremors this run, though. We we have been doing pretty well, yeah. Like this one. Yeah, we got we got all the tougher enemies, and okay. then we one-shotted the headless one. The headless guys we can one-shot with our expo. And look at that. So we stepped over this damage field, and we didn't take any damage. The next room is one of the gnarliest ones. And so we got these three enemies in the in the center that can chain sleep on you, and then the enemies that we've not seen in the run up to this point, uh, which are these sword shield guys. I actually forget their names, but they hit very hard. Um, so they can cast missile, which eh, okay, that's fine. That that does about 12 damage or so. Um, they can cast ice, which is a bit more serious. Um, they also hit really hard with their physical attacks. We'll just get an energy here so that everyone steps on that and dies. Yeah, and reflect. So they've got a lot of MP. They've got a lot of things going for them. Yeah, I don't think the enemies have MP. They can just cast the magic as much as they want. Yeah, so since we've got 99 MP and I used that ice spell a little more. That was one of the keys to kind of like saving our regents. All right, love and courage. Sacrifice. And orange stone. And this, <laughs> now we get to the fun floor. <laughs> this one will, yeah, so these last three floors are, actually the, the next ones, yeah, the last three floors are particularly gnarly. The first three, yeah, the first few floors had, like, some things that can, like, throw you off. Actually, this one does, too. Then the last few floors are just hardcore battle. Well, even entering this complex can throw you off because you have to go through that fake wall. Yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to enter from a fake wall at a certain spot or else you, there's no chance. And, and now there's, like, there's certain places where you can get messed up and go the wrong way and then you'll be thrown back to the beginning. And so he's going to be casting Trimmer a lot through here. Um, it would work out that casting Squish and Energy would be the most optimal, but you don't get the energy field when the enemies are in the water. No. Lava and water, I guess they don't mix. Yeah, and this, this floor is just mostly water fights. There's like one room where there isn't. There's just a lone enemy there. Save some MP some places. 
And do we have anything from the host? Yeah, actually, it's a yeah. good time. Sure. We have $25 from Dark77778. No comment, but thank you so much. And I want to remind people that we have plenty of incentives that are coming up. Uh, the Ultima 6 run right after this. Uh, Spoonie, for naming the Avatar, is currently in the lead, but Lord British and Lord French are right behind <laughs> him. Uh, just a $25 lead there, so if you want to snipe that bid, now is the perfect opportunity to do so. And then the Final Fantasy X Skip Showcase, we are at 246 of $3,000, so you do still have some time to get your donations in for that, but that door is going to close pretty quickly, so get them in while you can. Tremor. There are some stronger, um, there are some stronger missile weapons, but they're really expensive. Ice here. We're getting towards the end of this floor, but yeah, yeah there's a couple more rooms here. And I feel like almost every almost every run there will be at least one floor where we get like a sleep lock that we have a, a real butt clench moment, but we haven't gotten that yet. Thankfully, um, there's still time. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> yeah, I guess sometimes you finish without it, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, he put us. He's well, trying. Okay, yeah, now he, he, put he us was trying. He was trying, but I was yeah. prepared. Yeah, so the next room is actually, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get full heals up here. You know, if you're trying to get a good time, you can, you know, take a few risks, but I, we want to finish this. So I'm going to make sure that we're, we're all ready. So in that previous room, that was actually the entryway if he had walked straight into the door. Um, that just kind of sends you around and around this complex, unless you go into the, the fake wall. And it's funny, so you can open up that wall from the other side and it kind of trolls you into going back out if you if you weren't paying attention. Look at that, we, we, we passed through this room with no damage. Certainly a rare occasion. I did use two tremors, so that was a lot of MP. Yeah, so tremor's gonna be 40 just right off the bat. Yeah, I try and keep my eight, my MP around uh, over 80. All right, courage and truth. That would be honor. Okay. Uh, now see. we get a whole room full of these guys. Hope we get clear them out here. When you start with, so it goes from enemy one on. So if you. If you uh, if your tremor gets enemy number one, then you've got a good chance that it's gonna. And if it starts with enemy one, then you're probably gonna get a good tremor. So floor seven, um, there's a little bit of a trick to this floor uh, in the way that you have to move. Um, not moving through these rooms, but um, when you hit the exit. He's just going to recover some MP here, and then you'll notice that uh, when he does exit, he's going to exit over to the west. Yeah, I think in this case it might not matter, but I guess it's, uh, it's uh, the rest of them are like that. Yeah, and this is the same room we've kind of seen a million times. They, yeah. they copy-pasted this room quite a bit. <laughs> Pretty easy one, so clear out the the flames are really weak. So even if the tree gets you puts you to sleep, it's not so bad. Okay, and we'll get a uh, energy here. Wish hard to figure out exactly what the best order to do things in sometimes. 
and really there's yeah there's there's a good random factor in everything so is it uh, better to use energy first and then squish or squish then energy didn't really works out well either way but you know some some routes are more optimal than others yep depending on the situation again <laughs> rmp yeah, so lots, lots of walking. Uh, Selen's going to get a lot of steps in. His Fitbit's uh, pretty happy. He won. And he fought. Okay. okay. Yeah, those, those were the two <laughs> tough enemies. I mean, I guess there's the... This one back here is annoying, but not too bad. Yeah, not as bad as the uh, the skull enemy there that can cast Trimmer. And energy. <laughs> And then you've got the Beholder, which which can put you to sleep, so... I think that's the only instance of that enemy we see in this run. Uh, so yeah, unless you get a... Quick check here. 20, okay, 24. In pretty good shape. Unless so you we... get a random encounter around you, I believe. Yeah. Alright, Truth, Love, and Courage. The White Stone. All right, in the home stretch here. Yep. So this is the last floor of the of the dungeon, and it's not it's uh it's not going to disappoint. It's pretty brutal. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> right away we're getting sleep locked with like two fairly strong enemies that are coming at us. Okay, we woke up. Um, I think I'll do a wish to get them. I want to take this guy out so he doesn't put us back to sleep. All right, now now we're good. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. It was a little scary. It's always a little scary when you could get put to sleep and there's like multiple enemies nailing you. But um, usually you get up like usually you get up after just one or two turns. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> That one made up for all the sleep casts that the other Reapers missed. Yeah. So, what, yeah, when I play it safe and I get all my MP and HP back, like, I, it's pretty high percentage here. Like, I don't think we're going to... And we took... So we didn't get the Balrog, but we got everyone else. So, not too worried. Coming up ahead, at least you have, um, there are some energy fields that get, that come back. Um, so we saw them kind of at the beginning of this dungeon and they're gonna make another appearance here. Uh, thankfully, because it is a room full of like hydras and, and dinosaurs and they can all shoot at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like the enemies with missile attacks that can shoot at you are another category that's always annoying to deal with. At this room, we've seen this room before a couple times. Or again, it's 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 better just to kind of take the gamble with the tremor. Yeah, the tremor is like definitely the kind of like the the, the world record strat. If you're trying to to get through fast and take a few risks, um, you can. I mean, if you're really hardcore, you can even skip squish. But it's so useful. Yeah, this room can get pretty bad, but not not quite as bad as the next two. <laughs> when they all use their <laughs> missile attacks, though, we need them to move and, t and walk on the lava and die. Even though they're like fire-breathing lizards that you think would be resistant to fire, no. They, they walk on the lava and they die just like anything else. All right. Now, okay. The only thing working against you is that you have to actually walk up through these, these fields, so. Yeah. And, and, and you want to make sure you got some pretty high health for the next one. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to go all in. Um, so the next, uh, the next, so there's only two rooms left. Um, they're pretty gnarly though. So at the beginning of the game, Lord British said, uh, "Conquer the front, go conquer the frontiers of thyself." So I, 
I don't know if that's like a reference to this, but uh, we're gonna have something along those lines. Okay. Because here we have all of the uh, all of the characters that you can play as. That's all the friends we made along the way. They can't put us or, to sleep. Or didn't. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, some of them. Some of them we didn't even meet. And look at that. They just all moved at me. That was so. That was so nice of them. And you know, some of them are stronger than other ones. So we're gonna use Squish twice. They have. They're really tanky. Um, and they can. If they get it get up to me, they'll be able to do a lot of damage. But after getting two squishes and a. Tri um, after getting two squishes and then walking on this energy field, they're going to be just about dead. Hopefully. Except for Jeff. Jeff has his armor back and his axe, and he's coming for revenge. Oh, no. <laughs> and Katrina just can't get around Julius there. Look at that. Oh, and then she's going to fire a sling. Okay. So, you know... Any, 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 getting through there any way you do it is, is pretty good. We're not gonna, we're not gonna complain. If you, you know, the all-out strat is of course tremor on like everything. You can just do tremor and hope it hits. But again, doing it that way is is a bit of a gamble, uh, especially yes. there. Um, all those party members have higher HP than normal enemies, so it's gonna take a few more shots to take them out. Um, so it's going to burn up a, a lot of time if you oh, just yeah. get, like, maybe one trimmer and a zero trimmer or just get two of them. Okay, here we go. Last room. All right, it, it's it's going around the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're asleep. <laughs> so, oh, so we got a bunch of enemies, which was good. Okay, now we woke up, and we're still awake. Good, okay. I'm going to do another tremor and hope that we get some of these... Put the other guys down. All right. Okay, good enough. Yeah, that, that works. You got the nail biter right at the end. Yeah. Wake up. All right, here we go. That was the last fight. All right. Truth, love, and courage. What has nothing to do with them? Humility. And the stone, the black stone that we got in the very beginning. And if we hadn't gotten it, we'd be screwed here. And here's the onk spokes. So you have an opportunity to get ejected from the dungeon twice after that last encounter room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And if you walk back, if you hold down down, and you can walk back into the room, and you can't walk out. So, yeah, you have but to be careful. Oh, time is time, coming up pretty soon yeah, here. Yeah, time is here at the top of the stairs. That's time. Oh, wow. This was, uh, yeah, it was so glad that we could do this. And that's a fantastic time for, like, actually going through and killing Lord British, too. So you get to see your companions again here, and uh, then we'll get, get a little ending. And yeah, thanks again to everyone for everyone who's donating. The um, I guess uh, now that I finished this, it's it's uh, the only thing left to do is to um, uh, praise our deed to Lord British. You know, <laughs> that's what they another thing that he said. And I guess you could like send Lord British, and Lord British would like send you a, a letter or something. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, this this was great. I uh, I was really glad to be the the first person to do an Ultima game, and now I've done Ultima, um, Final Fantasy, and soon I'll do a Dragon Quest. So I've done all the major uh, classic series here. And though the journey's at an end, the quest of the Avatar is forever. So yeah, there's Richard Gary as Lord British, and uh, uh, a really brilliant like video game. Uh, one of the forefathers making RPGs in general. So the original version, like the original um, 
PC version of this game, I think is the canonical one. But like, this was, this is uh, definitely more approachable on the NES in a lot of ways. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Pony Canyon did a good job with, yeah, all, all, all these, all these ultimate NES games. Yeah. Oh wow. So yeah, it's a, it's a big feat to finish uh, one of these ultimate games sometimes. So we'll get to we'll, the next one is, is even faster. We'll see from Jire. So um, yeah, I want to thank uh, thank everyone for for uh, uh, letting me play here, and uh, I guess shout outs to everyone who donated and uh, everyone else. In the, the, there's, a few, there's a small community of people that you know run this game occasionally, <laughs> and uh, some people doing Ultima. Um, and um, yeah, if my family's watching. Thanks for letting me come out here for the week and abandon you for a little bit. <laughs> um, Anything for you, Troll? Uh, no. Pretty much said it all. Okay. I think we're all done then. Thank you so much, Axeman, for that awesome run of Ultima 4, teaching us all about eight specific things that we need to do in order to be the Avatar. So while we're setting up for the next game, Ultima 6, I just want to give a quick shout out to our community artists, Kari Fry, who designed the RPG Limit Break logo, and Mega Weasel and It's Casa, who are responsible for some of the emotes that you gain access to by subscribing to the RPG Limit Break channel. All revenue from the subs and the ads that we run on that channel will go to help us run future RPG LB marathons. But 100% of all the donations go straight to NAMI. So. We have a couple of donations here. We have a $26 anonymous donation and B. Grant who donates $30 and says, good luck on Ultima 6. And we're gonna throw you all to a quick Twitch ad, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more RPG Limit Break after these words.
Welcome back to RPG Limit Break 2022 here in Salt Lake City, Utah. We have another $25 donation from 77, uh, excuse me, Dark77778. No comment, but thank you again. And quick incentive plug here, the Final Fantasy X Skip Showcase is at just 246 out of $3,000. Please get your no donations in for that. You have until the end of the Final Fantasy X run, but again, that's going to come sooner than you think. And trust me, you are not going to want to miss this. Get your donations in for that. <laughs> 